thank you very much. Uh, and great to be here and to be with you again. Um, I think Amanda has made my job very much easier because she has covered all the principles and all the academic things that I'm not very good at. So what I will try to do is just to look at it, at what effect uh, had 9-11 had on U.S. relationship with us in Africa. And um, in doing that, I would want to step back and look at really how um, things unfold uh, in this country and vis-a-vis our, -vis our continent, uh, how we were viewed. Uh, you will you find that hardly had there been uh, any American president visiting Africa. Uh, Africa was a really, even in aid or support, we had the least. And, and um, pre, during the Cold War, what we really understand, and you can see what happened in our continent, was uh, the fight, the proxy fight war that was brought to us. The uh, old issues were looked in East-West. Uh, those of you who are neighbors or from DRC, uh, then Congo, uh, uh, Lipoville, then Kinshasa, then Zaire, whatever it is, you can see what happened in that country which led to the peacekeeping. Uh, people were taking side. Uh, either you, uh, you are west or you are east. You, there was no space to say you can be neutral. There was, that space was not there. And because you couldn't be neutral, uh, some of the proxy fight came into Africa. And any African leader that uh, was seen not to be in line by the West was either one way or the other attacked. And any country that the East, particularly the Soviet Union, see you being anti-West, they quickly step. Whether they like your country or not, they will step into it. Then the Cold War was over. And as uh, Amanda has rightly stated, I think all of us have a, uh, have a sign of relief. The West believing they would have more resources to develop their people. Uh, Africa had the belief that, oh, it is time now that uh, people will support us to grow economically. And issues will not be looked only at the pre uh, uh, under the prism of uh, uh, Cold War. So these were the things that happened. But even with the uh, end of the Cold War, um, Africa was still not considered important to the uh, uh, U.S. Um, I, in my reading, I found out that it was interesting that the president at the time when 9-11 took place in his campaign, he said, and I quote, was to this effect that Africa may be important. It doesn't fit into the national strategic interest as far as I can see. Yet for all the American refusal to make security claim about, uh, and yet that is why America didn't make any security claim or anything about the sub-Saharan Africa. Because as then President Bush uh, fighting for election said, we do not mean, Africa didn't mean much. It doesn't fit anywhere. So you can now understand that uh, these were the things that were happening. Um, and after the Cold War, what did we see? Uh, people found out that um, Africa, as uh, was a writer put it, that the Defense Department said, very little traditional strategic interest in Africa, that uh, they, they should have very little strategic interest in Africa. And the national security um, 
integration regional approach to security rank uh, Sub-Saharan Africa list in their consideration. And others follow suit. Uh, what Africa was seen was to be a place where disaster is made. That's all you find. Genocide, people like what happened in Rwanda, public health catastrophe, as uh, issue of AIDS that we have found. So really, uh, the only thing you can now see after the uh, well, after the Cold War, what you have was a humanitarian activity. And that was, it was under the offices of humanitarianism that uh, America went to help UN in Somalia. But unfortunately, you know, also when things went worst, American pull out because they felt Africa is only where there are barbaric wars. And when I read that, I said, which war, even football, is becoming barbaric. So I don't see why war should not be barbaric. Uh, but this is what then happened. But what happened, uh, uh, significant thing that happened in the cold, uh, uh, in 9-11, is that all of a sudden, and that is what I want you to understand that it is important, whatever your strategy is, it must be flexible, that you have to review it when things change. And that is why after 9-11, Af American African security strategy change because it became, and Africa started becoming important to America because America felt that weak states were dangerous because they were dangerous to American uh, security because weak states were not able to provide their people basic needs and there was, uh, they cannot police their territory, they cannot control their borders, and because of that, terrorists would grow very quickly in that environment. And, and, and we now see the effort that, that America started uh, to do. Because before then, the, uh, all you hear is just how to help um, uh, Afri Africa, how we are a uh, failed state and um, we are only good enough when uh, we are the helpers in aid so that we will not all die. And if, we, if many people die, then we may create a security. That's the only time they see we can create a security challenge to the U.S. But things change, and they change very quickly. And uh, after 9-11, um, the, the failed state issue, Americans then started feeling that if we don't put Africa in the priority, there will be a big challenge for them. And, and the big challenge that will happen because of the weakness of governance in Africa will create um, destabilization for them because people, uh, terrorists, there will be room to recruit. Yes, uh, one cannot argue there have been a lot of recruitment by non-state actors in, uh, in Africa, uh, but the the, the, the point I'm saying you can, is flexibility in your national strategy. Because all of a sudden, with all what the Department of uh, State, the uh, Department of Defense, other agencies were saying, after 9 11, the song changed. Then, as Amanda has also said, the issue of Horn of Africa became very important. It became very important because of proximity between the uh, Middle East and Africa. And there are so many things in common between the Middle Easterners and Africans, religion, ethnicity, uh, way of life, and so on, and, and trade. 
So this now created uh, a big challenge for America, and they quickly started changing. For example, um, the, uh, the failed state issue uh, became a thing of uh, that America would have to help. We have a quota program that was created. There was the uh, foreign military financing to, uh, to help uh, development, help training in Africa. In the past, the training of our military was done uh, under ACRI just to, oh, since Africans says African solution to African problem, let's train them so that they can now solve their problem and leave us in peace. But now, with 9-11, it changed. The equation and the story change, and you find out that um, um, defense saw Africa now as developing into a terrorist heaven. If we don't get in there, the terrorists will take over, they will have place to do what they want, and they will become a threat to us. The Department of State accepted and agreed with that, and we saw uh, more and more a connection of trying to help Africa. But the real challenge, the real challenge uh, some of us see is that it emphasis became more on security. And some people talk about securitization of policy. It was all on security. Uh, and I'm happy that things are beginning to change because people are asking questions that there can never be peace without security. And there can never be security. When you have security, there must be peace. And for that to happen, development must come in between. If there is no development, there can hardly be peace. And if there is no peace, there cannot be development. So how do we then work to help the, the weak states in that uh, respect? Um, for us in Africa, I'm happy that we have tried to take grapple with some of the challenges in Africa. Uh, most peacekeeping, uh, Burundi, Darfur, Liberia, Sierra Leone, we started, Africans started to take collective their own collective security. 9-11 started point uh, before 9-11. Africans started noticing that they have to do something because they can't wait to, for, to see others. But after 9-11, because we are becoming uh, important, there was now partnership between Africa and US policy started looking more inward into Africa. Um, maybe during discussion we can talk more uh, on this, but what I will say is that um, the issue, I wonder why African command was created, and you can see the reaction by Africans. Um, most African countries did not welcome the idea of the African, uh, African, uh, African command. And I think that is why it becomes difficult to find a country that was willing to house that command. Because Africans felt, a lot of Africans felt that we need development, and development will bring stability, and stability will bring peace, and peace will bring progress. But if we all pay more attention on the, uh, the military militarization of security, then it's not complete. And some feel that the money you are spending on the high uh, on the uh, African command could have been used and channeled to the U.S. ID to continue the helping of the people. Um, it's there's some saw it as a duplication of effort by America to do uh, those things. And the other uh, challenge 
you you then have uh, which I'm also happy that Amanda touched it uh, on it the issue of religion. You start making people start believing that a particular religion is a threat, not that some people in that religion are a threat. And, and not all, the, every other religion, and I've seen it also uh, in Africa, e extremism is coming in in virtually most of the religions, especially the major one, Islam and Christianity. So uh, I, I think it is, this is one of the things that uh, uh, becoming a source of concern. But be as it is, I believe, a lot of Africans believe that Africom is fine if they will work to allow and create space not to take sight. For example, people believe that uh, Ethiopian position, not taken, not against any uh, person, please, but some believe that Ethiopian position on Somalia is unattainable and that it is going the way it is going because they have external support which is weakening the African uh, as, a, as a, a group. So these are some of the challenges that, um, that are there. But what type of external shock, what are the consequences, the shock effect of some of these things to us in Africa? Um, there has been an economic shock. Um, travel has become more expensive because uh, to fly, extra security measures have to be put into flying, into traveling, and by that, it has reduced people, and the way perception of what Africa is, is a dangerous place. It makes less and less people wanting to go to Africa. So where you have tourism and other things, it become an economic problem. And because of that, there are lots of jobs. In, uh, a lot of our youth have no job and the circle then continues. If the young people have no job, they will have to earn a living, and they have sometimes joined the terrorist groups. And then uh, health. When people are malnourished, when people don't have the balanced diet, when parents cannot provide for their children, uh, when parents cannot provide for their children, what will they do? Um, the children have to fend for themselves. They have to go on the street, they have to do this. So you find again that uh, there is a problem of uh, health, uh, good health services. These are some of the uh, uh, fallout. Uh, and then the, some of the shocks are the internal shocks we have in Africa itself, the terrorism, and then the next one is issue of secession. When things, the economic thing has become so bad, then people think, no, 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 no. We have been marginalized or we have been uh, um, suppressed. We have uh, we are not we have freedom of speech and this, so we want to succeed. And the issue of breaking come. And unfortunately, if we break in peace, then it is okay. But we see what has happened in Sudan, even with the referendum. What do we see happening? So these are some of the, uh, the challenges that we could discuss more. But I want to round up to say that Africa as a continent, we have uh, understood some of these challenges. And you see, if you look at what the AU has come up with, the AU has now come up with the Constitutive Act of the African Union, where 53 states have signed. The only two states that have not signed is South Sudan and I think Morocco. All the others have signed. And there are articles which created the peace security architecture for Africa. You can go into the internet and look at it. But the peace security uh, architecture had come up with the Peace Security Council, which is the central organ of the AU. There is a panel of wise because we believe that the words of our elders are words of wisdom. So we still want to use our old people uh, with, with their wisdom to create peace in Africa. There's the continental warning, early warning system. There's the standby force. There's the peace, um, there is the peace fund. And all these things are there to help. And you can see that AU has actually broadened is look of security. It is, and the interpretation of security is not the classic one that OAU had. 
and um, we, they have created collective security requirement. And when you have stated in the uh, Constitutive Act that attack threat to one nation is threat to all of the AU members. So we are beginning to work closer and, uh, and they created the Peace Security Council. The Peace Security Council is not like the UN Security Council where there are permanent members uh, in the Security Council who have veto power, who if all of you talk, any of the five can pull out and say, and that is the end of it. AU doesn't have that. Um, there is also a clear case after Rwanda that yes, we will not interfere in individual countries' uh, affairs. However, if there is genocide, if there is a, a threat against humanity, external and approved by AU, there will be intervention in countries. And I, the, the other good side of it is that a country that is in big problem can request AU to send troops to assist. Um, and it's interesting when you read the Constitutive Act of the African Union. He's, he's one of them said, inspired by the noble ideas which guided the founding fathers of our continental organization and generation of Pan-Africanism in their determination to promote unity, solidarity, cohesion, and cooperation among the peoples of Africa. It also talks about guided by our common vision of a united and strong Africa and by the need to build a partnership between government and all segments of civil society, in particular women, youth, and the private sector in order to strengthen solidarity and cohesion among our people. It went on to come up with uh, 33 articles. They are there for you to read. I will not bother you going to. But one greatest thing in the articles, in Article 14, to achieve greater unity and solidarity between the African people, and also to talk about the encourage international cooperation, take, uh, taking due account of the Charter of the United Nations and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So there are so much that Africa itself is coming to terms. Agree, there are challenges, no doubt. But if you look at the vision and the aspiration of the Africans as a nation, as a continent, you will begin to find out that we are finding uh, it's important that we come together. There is encouragement of the regional economic organizations to work, because if they work better, the AU will become better. Uh, at least all of those from ECOWAS, we have actually the same passport. Uh, I can. Uh, the only I tell people the only part of the world I go without looking for a visa is any country in West Africa. But anywhere outside West Africa, I have to fight to look for a visa to go. We are becoming closer. We are becoming closer. We will end up with maybe one currency in the zones, and then gradually, as a nation, we will begin to address our problem. But I think what is important for the whole of us to know that the world is a global village. We all need each other. However, we should deal with each other as partners, not as uh, colonial masters or neo-colonial masters and servants. If that is removed, I believe the working relationship will be better and we will learn more. So. I conclude by saying this is some of the things that we can just uh, talk the rest in discussion that we need to work as partners in the whole world. Thank you.